Today, we're going to talk about three of the most popular ways to get around the Las Vegas Strip. There is the free tram service, the paid monorail, and the Las Vegas Strip bus. Now, I've been to Las Vegas over 50 times and only recently started exploring the transportation options besides walking. In fact, this month was the first time I ever even tried the paid monorail. Last month was the first time I ever tried the bus. Isn't that surprising? But anyway, I'm going to show you what you need to know about these modes of travel from the location to the cost, the routes, and convenience levels. I'll also compare these to the simplest option, which is just walking to your destination directly. So let's get started. First, let's talk about the location. The Las Vegas Strip is a 2.2 mile stretch of huge casinos and is informally divided into three sections. There is the south part of the Strip with hotels such as the MGM Grand, the Excalibur, the Luxor, the New York, New York, and the Park MGM. The mid Strip with hotels such as the Bellagio, Caesars, and the Horseshoe Hotel and Casino. Then there's the north part of the strip with hotels such as the Wynn, Circus Circus, and the Stratosphere. If you want more information on the Las Vegas Strip, I made a separate video about that and many other Las Vegas hotel reviews. I'll leave links in the description in case you want to check those out after the video. In addition to the hotels, there are several attractions worth pointing out on this map. The southern part of the Strip has the Allegiant Stadium and the T-Mobile Arena. The mid Strip has the Bellagio Fountains, Miracle Mile Shops, and the High Roller Ferris Wheel. The south part of the Strip has the Venetian Canals, the soon to open MSG Sphere and the Las Vegas Convention Center. Even though the strip may seem small, the distance between locations can be quite deceiving and with the Las Vegas heat often reaching 100 degrees Fahrenheit or above, even at night, it's nice to know there are other ways to get around for the times you don't want to walk or even be outside. Now, let's talk about the free trams. So, there are a total of two free trams. One starts at the Mandalay Bay, has one stop at the Luxor, and ends at the Excalibur. The second tram starts at the Park MGM, has one stop at the Aria slash Shops at Crystals, and ends here at the Bellagio. These trams are not connected. In fact, if you wanted to get to the Bellagio from the Mandalay Bay, you would need to take the first tram two stops Exit the tram, walk through the Excalibur Casino, through the New York, New York Casino, walk through the Park MGM Casino, and all the way to the back of the hotel, up several sets of escalators to board the second tram. Surprisingly inefficient, wouldn't you say? I would. So, the purpose of these trams seems to be primarily to get you from one hotel to the other and not as a convenient transport through the strip. Because when you add up all the walking it takes to take these trams, I'm sure it's almost the same distance to walk directly to the destination without the tram. You will, however, be protected from the elements, such as the extreme Las Vegas heat at certain times of the year. So, that is a valuable benefit. Speaking of benefit, if you find this video helpful, please give it a like and consider consider subscribing. Next, let's talk about the bus. The Las Vegas Strip bus is called the Deuce and stops every few blocks on both sides of the Strip. If you want to take this bus, you can pay directly at the bus or you can pay through the app. The full fare for a two-hour access pass is $6. For a 24-hour pass, it's $8. And for a three-day pass, you're looking at $20. Now, I mentioned I took this bus in June, and here's my experience. So I spent four nights at the Encore, which is on the north part of the Strip. I did like the hotel and the amenities. However, with four nights, I wanted to explore other parts of the Strip. So I wanted to travel south of the Strip to spend more time gambling at hotels like the New York, New York, and Excalibur. I had a feeling those slots would pay better. But anyway, I purchased a three-day unlimited pass for $20. I figured I would use it several times per day, even if just for a stop or two. Well, that's not what happened. My first experience was that many bus stops were not functioning, so I had to walk several blocks in the heat to the next stop. I then realized they don't space the buses properly, so since I just missed two buses that were very close together, I would be waiting extra long for the next bus. The Las Vegas Strip is currently experiencing major renovations, which shut down many lanes of the street and caused even more delays. When the bus finally came, it was overly full, leaving some passengers to wait for the next bus. There were no seats on the bus and the air conditioning was very weak. The cleanliness on the bus was below expectations and when the bus started moving it was so slow I ended up getting off before my stop 
to walk the rest of the way. My experience was the same the two times I took the bus. And after that, I just gave up the value of the ticket I paid and walked the rest of my trip. Needless to say, I don't consider the bus a viable option for those who value their time. It's possible your experience may be better in the cooler season and when the construction on the strip has ended. The reason I even tried the bus was because I saw videos giving it a good review. But this bus gets zero stars from me though. Finally, let's talk about the paid monorail. As I mentioned earlier, I have never taken the paid monorail till just this month. The primary reason for that is just because I didn't realize there was one. I was familiar with the free trams and thought when people said the monorail, they were just talking about the trams. But the monorail is something different altogether and that is much more convenient and although comes at a cost, it is an excellent way to get around the strip. In this map of the monorail stations, you'll see that there's some very convenient stops along the way. They are spaced out just enough to make it worth it instead of of walking. I boarded the monorail at the MGM Grand and took it a few stops to the center of the strip and exited at the Flamingo Hotel. The monorail arrived quickly, was nicely temperature regulated, and clean. The stations were well cared for and had employees posted inside the stations to help you along the way. The price for a one-way trip was $6, but they do give you a discount. If you want to buy an all-day pass, you can get one for $15. They also have an option for a two-day pass for $26 and a three-day pass for $32. There is a slight discount available if you're willing to buy tickets through your cell phone app instead of through the ticketing agent. So how do all these transportation options compare to walking? Which is my favorite and which would I avoid at all costs? Well, being from New York, my preference will always be to walk. I really like walking through the strip and there's always so much to see and do. However, when my day plan calls for lots of travel, I will use the free tramp to cut down on some of the walking and to avoid the heat during the hot months. As far as the bus, thinking about it just makes me mad. So I will not be taking the bus anytime soon. The paid monorail is something I highly recommend. I wish I would have experienced it sooner. It's a great option to get to the center of the strip if you are staying at the south of the strip or the north of the strip. It is fast and clean and in my opinion the best way to get around the strip to cut down on walking or to go farther than you otherwise would. Thanks for watching and you can watch these videos next to help maximize your travel.